All right. Hey, we're back Sports Monday, and uh, joining me, I have two gentlemen I've known since probably they were in high school. They've become well-distinguished gentlemen here in Brooklyn. And uh, joining me first is Deval Ellis. Deval went to Madison High School, played football at Madison High School. From Madison, he went to Hofstra University, where yes, he sir. had an excellent college career. And from, Matt, uh, from Hofstra, well, he went to the NFL, where he played several years. Thanks, thanks for coming, Deval. No, thanks for having me, Mike. Right. I appreciate it. And this young man, well, he played for Fort Hamilton High School, was on those back-to-back -back title championship teams. And from there, he went to Rutgers University. And from Rutgers, he went to Bethune-Cookman, where they defeated Morgan State University. We'll get to that. All right. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, What's it been up to? What, how, how, how's life in general? I haven't seen you guys uh -huh. in quite some time. Life is life as well. You know, I've got a three-year-old son, you know, working on my business still, trying to Grow as an entrepreneur, still mentoring young men, just enjoying life. How about you, KJ? Uh, you know, I got football going on still, and just you know, learning, learning, right. the, learning the qualities of even becoming more of a man. Right. And now you're in the, uh, you're joining the, you'll be playing with the uh, Toronto Argonauts of the Canadian Football League, right? Yes, sir. Your two year deal you signed. Two year deal. You were also with the Jets, right? How yes, was, was that process? Explain also. Explain going from college to the profession to the NFL. That whole adjustment process, the mental, the physical, well, you, all You've done it more recent, so. Yeah. I mean, you know, just as far as the physical aspect of it, you really, you're not training to be a football player anymore. You're training to prepare yourself to be, you know, kind of like a track athlete where you're, you're, you're equipped to run a 40-yard dash, you know, to run as fast as you can, you know, to, to bench press as much as you can. So it's, it's a completely different form of training and, you know, just setting yourself aside, you know, a timetable for everything so you're not overworking yourself. Right. And as far as the mental aspect, we can also see some of those pictures of KJ also. Um, what is the mental aspect of the game? Because there's a whole mental aspect people don't know about. You, you're tested all the time. You have to know the plays. But before getting into the league, they give you a mental aptitude test, correct? Right, yeah. The, uh, the test is called the Wonderlick test. It's based on time because the reaction time in football when you get to the elite level is a lot faster. You have to be able to process information and regurgitate it quickly. So they try to test people uh, with you know, quick questions. They give you... I think it's about eight minutes. You have to answer a, a large amount of questions just to see how you respond to questioning. So, but what does that have to do with the game itself? It's just your speed. As many questions as you can get through, it just shows how you retain information, how fast you can deliver and go. Because that's exactly how football is. Mm -hmm. An average play lasts for six seconds. Be able to react at a high speed is. You know, that's that's really what the next level is. Yeah, and also, the play also always changes because there's a different defense in front of you or a different right. offense, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's more of a, a thinking man's game now. It's not like the old Neanderthal type of football where you put 11 guys out in a mosh pit right. and they, uh -huh. they punch each other. No, right. it's, they it's grind spread it out. out. Right. <laughs> it's, it's spread out now. Uh -huh. It's a lot mm -hmm. of different terminology and a lot of movement. So it's, it's changed a lot. Right. Um, in terms of football, what has it done for you also so far up to this point? Because you're running your own company, Elite Prototype. Explain what that company is about. Uh, Elite Prototype Athletics started about four years ago. When I retired from the NFL, I had about 10 kids come to me asking about training. So I started, decided to start studying exercise physiology so I can give them a better opportunity to get bigger, stronger, faster. From that point, I realized that there was a niche market yeah, for there's, me, there's too. Also, you're training one young man? Right, yeah, that's me and one of my young kids' muscle. He's about nine. Well, he's bigger now. He's 11. But, okay. uh, you know, it's pretty much an opportunity for me to mentor these kids. I realized that not only the, the physical aspect, but they were lacking the mental capacity to translate from a high school and NYC player to a collegiate athlete. So it's just my forum to train athletes and prepare them for the next level. And then we branched out, you know, from football to basketball, girls track and field, volleyball, girls volleyball. So we, we've done a lot more. You also helped KJ get ready, right, for camp? Oh, yeah, man. Last year, you know, KJ came to me. It was a unique situation where he, he just said, Deval, I just, I just want to be the best I can be. That's it. Like I just he he really dedicated as much into the program as I dedicated to him. It was more like a collaboration more than me just training him because he put so much time into listening to what I had to say that it, you know it helped him grow, but also helped me grow. High school well. in New York City, period, especially when you guys win a championship, seems to have gotten so much better, so much more competitive regionally. Uh, through I mean, as far as high school football players, to me, can play with the players in Long Island. They can play with the players right. in New Jersey, mm -hmm. Connecticut. Do you feel that right now that, that it's more competitive here in New York City throughout the five boroughs? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as the years go on, you see there's more guys from New York City going in Division One colleges. So, I mean, I remember going in high school, we uh, actually were given the opportunity to scrimmage St. Anthony's. And, I mean, we competed with them at a very high level when I was in high school. So I mean, as as the guy, as the years go on and more and more talent from the city makes their way to the uh, Division One, 
we can compete against anybody just given the opportunity. If you respect, if we're, if we're well respected as a football state and not only looked at as a basketball state, I think New York City could give a lot of states a run for their money. All right. We're going to move on. Let's talk a little bit also what's going on in the NFL these days. Um, when you look at the uh, case of Deshaun Jackson, he allegedly has some gang affiliations, it's been said. Whether it's proven or not, I don't know. We don't know. But what you know about the company you keep, especially you're, play, you're playing, you know, right now in the Canadian Football League, you're, you played in the NFL, you're also with the mm -hmm. Jets. What sort of investigation goes on behind the scenes? Because I heard the investigation is basically, you know, going, if you're going out for a, a special agent job with the FBI. I mean, I mean going research through your background since you were probably in uh, elementary school. I mean, going through the process now, even signing to the CFL, I must have been asked the question, have you ever been arrested? Several times, several times. Just because I guess it's a workplace at the end of the day and I think you don't want to give that opportunity to someone who's, who has a criminal record. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a business where they're investing a lot of money into you. Would you want to invest a million dollars in somebody who has a criminal background, who's affiliated with, with the, uh, you know, the criminal society of the world? So it's all about what you're looking for. It's, it's how you want to be perceived. Right. And, and the biggest thing now is they don't even really need to investigate. I mean, social media gives you instant access to people. So you put up things on your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter of certain people and individuals you hang out with. Your boss may not feel comfortable. And this is not just with Deshaun Jackson. Let this be, you know, the corporate world. You know, you, you put up pictures of yourself at a bar with someone who's in the, the criminal lifestyle. Your sure. boss may find that and say, you know what, this is not someone we want working or representing our company. So it's not limited to just athletes. It's just people in general. And social media is realistically why all of this is happening. Have you also spoken to younger athletes about this situation or as far as just in, 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 in detail to some all the, All the time. We, we speak all the yeah. time. Like I speak to athletes and, and the funny thing is, you know, they start to look at me as a dinosaur. I retired from the NFL in 2010, but, you know, KJ was just there last year. So now I'm the past and I have KJ come speak to them. He tells them the same things. With some of these guys, they just have to learn at their own pace and yeah. learn through mistakes. You know, they're men at the end of the day, and they, they feel like they know things and they feel invincible. Sometimes you got to learn the hard way. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, I'm fresh out of college. I'm not too far removed from the game, but uh, just exactly what he was saying. Just I remember going in the coach's office during the recruiting process, and, you know, social network, so, social pages were one of the questions that they asked, you know, what's your Facebook link, what's your, you know, your Twitter link, just because they want to look and see how you perceive right. yourself. You could put up a, fa a facade and say, you know, I'm this, I'm that, but, you know, your pictures are worth a thousand words. If right. you're affiliated, if you're in a party and there's a bunch of red cups, but mind you, I'm not the one drinking, you're just by just, by just your surroundings, yeah, you're yeah, affiliated yeah. with it. Just, right. Let's, uh, also, you went from Rutgers <clears throat> to bethune Cookman. Difference in the way you were treated, the difference in was it, a, I hate to say it this way, was their ice warmer or colder at bethune Cookman? I mean, you know, coming from Rutgers, and I, uh, I actually followed my uh, position coach from Rutgers, Brian Jenkins, and, you know, the relationship that we had established up north and then, you know, bringing it down to the south, I can say, you know, I was treated a little bit different, but the expectations of me, you know, showing leadership, being attentive, being uh, responsible, was also at a high demand. So it went hand in hand on. If, of course, he showed me some type of lenience, but he also expected a lot more. He wanted me to show the ropes to the younger guys and even older guys just on how things, were, how things should be done. Right. Cool. All right. You know, what? big issue has come up recently, especially during this Final Four period. You know, the big the, uh, NCAA's and is college unionization of athletics, and basically the athletes want them to share the wealth. Your take on that, Jay? Uh, I, I think that that's Devon. completely fair. I mean, you know, this is the only business, a billion-dollar business, where. The, the clients, not the clients, excuse me, but the employees do not share the revenue. For example, take a school like Alabama who, who may generate $300, $400 million a year. You're telling me that an athlete, a star athlete. And that's athlete, just football. And that's just mm -hmm. football. That's just football. We're not even talking about basketball. basketball. Okay. But you're telling me a star athlete is only deserves $30,000 a year, which is pretty much equivalent to the education that you basically, receive. But basically, uh, Deval, they're paying for lights, they're paying mm -hmm. for your meals, they're paying for your travel, they're paying for your books. Understandable. They're paying all that, your clothing, I mean, to, I mean, start your uniforms. Understandable. So all that is included in the scholarship package. You knew what you were getting to when I, you signed the deal. The biggest thing with unionization, though, is also workers' compensation. We okay. play a sport that's very violent. It's, it's not a physical sport. Mm -hmm. It's violent. Uh -huh. Players can be hurt. We have to renew our scholarships every year. You may get to a point where 
you can't play football anymore? What if your scholarship is taken? What if your coach leaves? What if your position coach leaves and they bring in guys and you can't play anymore? Now you have no one to protect your rights and protect your ability to have a voice because you're just a number at the end of the day when you play college football and a lot of people don't understand that. Everyone thinks when they get to college they're going to play two, three years, maybe four, go to the NFL. Doesn't happen. Less than 1% of athletes go to the NFL. The rest of the athletes have to live regular lives and get out, go out and get jobs. When you play college football, you have no time to internship. So it's you like, what, it's about 50 hours uh, a week sometimes, oh, it's, the practice? Way more than 50 hours a week. I mean, that was the, that's what I heard. We, we work maybe, we work six days a week. You know, you're up 6.30 for morning runs during the off season. You, you have to go to class. You have study hall. You have lifting. Then you have film. I, I don't remember having a time during my four years at Hofstra when I wasn't doing something football related. So it's all year round. Right? All year mm -hmm. round. Could agree. Just thinking about it, why shouldn't a player should be able to, you know, get some type of money from a university, just like he was hitting on saying that, you know, they, they gain so much from an athletic standpoint. But uh, just think about the athletes that come from low-budget um, households. It's the same difference. And you ran into athletes like that. Oh, yeah, I remember. Of course, you played with players course. Who, who, of course. who were lacking in, in the necessities. Yeah, and I mean. And the coaches and, and no one. Well, I mean, realistic, I mean, there, there are rules. Or, okay. that, you know, for example, not only are we on scholarship, but, but that, we can't work. Is that why you have boosters also sliding them on? You know, some I mean, some, money some, schools have, some schools have boosters, and, and let's not act like naive and right. say that mm -hmm. some players don't get paid. But you wouldn't even need boosters if there was a union and they did some sort of revenue sharing to where if a school was to raise $300 million, say 10% of that income went to the players on that team. That's $30 million split between those players. Those players have, it's about 100 players on the team, $30 million to mm -hmm. that. That gives about three hundred thousand dollars to you know to each player a year. You could put that in a fund. You could put that in a fund upon graduation. You'll have a lot less players trying to take the leap to the NFL and finishing their education if they had an opportunity to still provide for their families. Real quick, think mm -hmm. about Frank Gore's situation. Mm -hmm. We got, we got, we got to go. We're out of time. Okay, okay. Listen, I know you guys got a camp coming up April twenty seventh, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully, sight to be determined. You're you're training athletes to the next level, high school football all athletes. This was all KJ's idea. KJ's yeah, I'm happy to wanted to give okay. to the community. Yeah, I'm having a camp. Uh, it's free admission. I'm giving back to the community. Okay, focusing on football skills. All right, good. April 27th to be determined. April 27th. Be determined. Okay, Sunday. All right, cool. Thanks for coming on, fellas. I want to have you guys back on again. G good luck next season. All right. Up next, the story of a family, the business they've owned since before World War II and the time in a man's life when he decides it's time to hand the job on. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> 